Hey guys, so welcome to the beginning of my video series for the Easter Spring collab that is being hosted by Akram from Akram's Ideas and Judith from Judith D World. If you're not already following along with this so long collaboration um, kind of extravaganza for Easter, definitely check it out. Uh, every, everybody's going to be using the hashtag uh, Easter Spring Dress 2017 um, and luckily there's actually going to be prizes involved for people who participate. I, I know uh, from the last I heard uh, McCall's is actually going to be giving away a couple patterns from their spring line so if you're on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook go ahead and use the hashtag and I'll put that hashtag in the description below uh, for you guys to check it out, participate. Um, this video though is going to be specifically about the fitting process of my Easter spring dress. Uh, I decided to go with uh, Vintage Vogue V8789 which I've actually made before but uh, I made it a couple years ago so it's been a really long time since I've touched this pattern. Um, I used to do my fitting way differently back then than I do now and so it was really important to me to kind of pull this out because I really wanted to give it like another try because the last dress I mean it was a nice dress, I got a lot of compliments on it and I, I did like the fabric on there. The fabric print was great, the fabric itself was awful so I knew that I had to remake it and uh, now it fits so much differently <laughs> like when I finished the muslim in this uh, whole video so uh, definitely stick around to the end and then I'll go ahead and show you guys a preview of uh, when I show my full production of the actual dress. For this particular pattern, I ended up deciding to trace off a size 16, uh, which is smaller than my full bust adjust, uh, I'm sorry, my full bust measurement, but I went with my high bust just because I knew that this dress had a lot of ease. I did the measurements on there and it looks like I have about two inches of ease on this dress, which is a lot. And especially if I'm gonna go for like a vintage um, style silhouette and you know, sizing and stuff, I wanted this dress to be really snug. So right now I'm actually just in the process of tracing off the pattern pieces. Uh, if if you have not already gotten a chance to watch my video about how to trace pattern, uh, go ahead and watch that. I'll go ahead and link it down in the description below so you can take a look. Um, I got to go into uh, tracing vintage patterns, modern reproduction, and like PDF patterns. Um, it'll be helpful if you're going to be doing this pattern. So I'm just going to go ahead and just finish tracing this off and I'll catch you guys up on the first muslin. At this point, before I even got started on the first muslin, what I did was I uh, stitched in the back, center back line. I've stitched in the waistline of where the waist of the pattern is. And I've also clipped in some notches for the fold lines. Now because my torso is super short, I make sure to put these guys in there. Uh, and then what I'm actually doing right now is just using a straight edge to kind of put those guides in for myself. Um, these will be on your pattern paper if you uh, have a pattern that has shortening lines but I'm putting them in here so that when I'm doing the pinning later on I can verify that everything you know like I know how much I need to fold up when I'm wearing it um, this particular pattern does have a petite line so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that and the petite markings on this are up to that point now this is a length and shorten and then this is where the petite measurements are but chances are I'm willing to bet that I'm probably gonna have to take it up the entire time but anyway, that, it's ready to go ahead and get the muslin made up. So after the muslin is set up, uh, you know, I tried the first version and I can see it is super, super long on me. Like it's so long. So I went ahead and just folded it up the distance as in the lines that I've already put in there with the marker. And you can see that I really do need to take it up the entire time. Um, and that's all the way around, uh, including putting in a sway back adjustment uh, tuck that I put into that pattern. So first thing you gotta do is you gotta measure the distance. Um, Luckily, most of the measurements uh, I could just gauge off of the markers that I put in there. Um, so what I did is measure that distance on the front just to kind of verify how much that overlap was going to be. And then I moved on to the back and you can see here that I'm moving the ruler around 
verify that it's the same measurement that I need to take in the back, and then figure out how much that sway adjustment's gonna be. Uh, in my case, it's about a half an inch sway, uh, sway back adjustment, which I go ahead and write down as well, because that'll be another change I'm gonna do between this muslin and the second. Also, uh, something that was done off camera was I also kind of took in a little bit of a tuck on the shoulder seam because my shoulders are a little bit more narrow. So I went ahead and just uh, folded that over, take the measurement, and then got started. So first things first, this is something that I always do. It's, you know, not everyone has to do this, but I mark in red the whether it's the front or back, especially with uh, this particular pattern, uh, this uh, V8789, the front looks exactly the same as the back except for the size of the dart. So it's really important for me to be able to tell which, one, which side was which. So here I am folding up the distance for that lengthening adjustment. I'm double checking it, making sure it's the right size, and then pulling out my handy dandy tape dispenser. Uh, if you've seen any of my other adjusting videos, you know I go through a bunch of tape. So if you don't already have your own tape dispenser, you definitely need to invest in one ASAP. Oh, and here I am redrawing my darts with my French curve, just making sure that I blend them out to one even curve. Ooh, so since I'm still on the first pattern piece, I went ahead and marked uh, my new shoulder seam. You can kind of see there that I'm blending out that shoulder, marking what these new lines are so that when I match it up against the uh, corresponding pattern piece on the back, I can see that those shoulder seams match up properly. French curve comes in handy again. Blend out that seam there to make sure you have an even smooth curve. And in my case, I went ahead and also uh, marked my seam allowances on the side seam so that I could walk my patterns later. Cool, so here we are on the back. Same thing as the front, I went ahead and shortened the bodice length according to the guidelines on the pattern paper. Uh, you can see there that I'm folding everything up according to the guidelines. And at this point, I started working on my sway back. So I measured up about half an inch uh, up the center back, drew my diagonal line, and then pulled out the scissors because we're going to be overlapping the center back just slightly to accommodate that sway back adjustment. Ooh, so here I am overlapping it that half inch and then taping that down. And at this point, my, um, my back dart points had uh, shifted just slightly. So I went ahead and corrected that. So this is uh, this part here is just me filling in a little bit of uh, paper there on the corner. Uh, you can see there that I just put in a piece of scrap paper and then blended that out to extend that little corner there that was um, kind of made wonky by the folds and the sway back adjustment. Cool. So, um, you know, definitely, if you haven't already seen the video of um, how to walk a pattern, you'll definitely want to do that as you're going, because you'll see that I just walked the side seams on my two pattern pieces, and I'm walking the shoulder seam as well to make sure that those match up and that everything is smooth right before I make my next muslin. So in this case, you can kind of see that I've already needed to do the full bust adjustment. For me, it was about, um, an inch and a half so here I am about to get that started you draw your guidelines you pivot you snip all the way up to the shoulder or I'm sorry the the arm scythe and 
and you know just make sure to go slowly when you're actually doing the full bust adjustment itself um, I know it can be a little bit overwhelming especially if it's not it's including some darts that are not in your original pattern so in this case I went ahead and did all my snips and I'm about to start there you see my tape dispenser I will be needing a lot of that in this process here Ooh, so first things first, tape down the front of the bodice, then measure out the distance that you determined when you put on your muslin. And here I am taping down the opposite side. Cool, so once that's taped down, you do need to lengthen the center front just to be able to accommodate the length over the front of your, of your torso. So I am cutting out that square and I'm about to slide it down. You see there that I'm trying to make sure to keep that distance even. And then more tape. Ooh, so at this point I'm going to head and just kind of finish up that center front. And then the next thing was to start drawing my guidelines in order to be able to close off that dart that was created on the side seam by where the gridded ruler is in the shot. Well, actually, right here I'm just kind of redrawing the dart, but um, don't forget to do that. And use your French curve if you have a kind of a bigger chest because it'll make sewing that uh, dart easier later on. Anyway, yeah, so here I am clipping in that dart on the side which is not in the original design so I want to go ahead and rotate that dart to the bottom dart so I'm opening up the bottom dart now in order to be able to start rotating out that side dart Now when you're pivoting that dart, you wanna make sure and just get those snips as closest to the middle as you can before you start pivoting. So there I am, closing up that side dart, a little bit of tape, and then I'm filling in that bottom dart with some paper. And at this point, close up that bottom dart so that you can blend off the bottom of the bodice because you want to make sure you have a smooth bodice that will match the skirt pieces later on. So I went ahead and folded that, got my tracing wheel, did a tracing of the tracing wheel, and then realized, you know, I probably have too much tape in this situation, so I'm just better off cutting that out. But before I cut it out, I'm just gonna use my French curve and go ahead and trace off where that curve is supposed to be to blend that seam. Take my scissors and snip. Cool, new dart. So at this point, I could sew muslin number three, which I put a zipper in. Uh, everything's looking pretty good, um, but the problem is that my bust point is not in the correct spot. So I went ahead and taped my new bust, uh, I'm sorry, marked my new bust point, and then kind of figured out, okay, it's about an inch to there, and my actual bust is probably about an inch down. I'm sorry, um, that's just where I want my bust point to be. So I know I need to move it, my dart, one inch in one direction and one inch down. So I'm drawing my guidelines in this particular shot just so that you can see. I'm going to be cutting out the dart essentially and sliding it. Cool, so once my guidelines are in, I went ahead and drew a, well, dealt with a marker that was sliding around my table and I drew a box around my dart.
So <clears throat> once that entire box is cut out, you have to imagine you're gonna be uh, shifting and sliding the entire dart over to the correct position. So here I am, snip, snip, snip. And you see that I'm grabbing the entire dart all the way and then I put in a little bit of paper and slid that dart to where I wanted to go based on the measurements I took on the muslin, taped everything down, used my French curve to uh, smooth everything out, closed that dart, readjusted the bottom seam again. And cut out that new bottom seam. Cool. So everything's looking pretty good. My final Maya slim is ready to go and I'm ready to start sewing my real garment. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys who are facing any fitting issues with this particular pattern. Uh, Vintage Vogue V8789, it's actually really popular. I know there's been a lot of people who've done this project before, but I know seeing the fitting process has already seemed to be really useful for the people who are subscribed to this channel. Anyway, so I was going to show you guys a preview of the fabric that I'm going to use in the next video when I actually make this dress. So it is this beautiful like coral linen fabric. It is gorgeous and it feels like butter and I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about this in depth in the next video but I hope you guys liked it uh, please leave me a comment thumbs up subscribe all the places all the stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys <laughs>